Grid shared size scoping is a useful tool for handling consistent grid sizing across multiple grids. I've actually started using grid shared size scope a lot in my own application. So let's take a look at why you might want to use this and how you can implement it in your own application. So here in this demo, I have this form where a user can create an account. And as you can see, I have two columns here, one with all these labels and another column with all these text boxes where the user inserts information. And to accomplish this layout, I simply have a bunch of rows and two columns. But actually, back looking at this form, I feel like there should be a little bit more space between this header and this first input. So what I'm going to do is come down here and add some more margin to this text block. And, oh, now nah, I did that. i got to add margin to this one, too. And let's go ahead and update that. So i got to change the margin in two places. That's not really good. So what I'm going to do instead is surround this username, the label, and the text box. I'm going to put that in its own grid. And then this grid will just handle the top margin for me. It'll be in grid row one, so I can remove that from both of these elements. And now this grid will have its own column definitions. And most importantly, I can get rid of this top margin on each element because my surrounding grid will handle that for me. And actually, I'm gonna go ahead and match the structure in all of my input fields down here. Great, so I've moved all of these inputs into their own grids. So here we have a grid for the username, email, password, all the way down. So that means the grid can handle the top margin and also handle the row. And then my columns are inside of each input grid, which also means I no longer need columns for my main grid. So let's see how this looks. And that does not look good at all. As you can see, these columns do not line up at all. And how are we going to solve that? It's going to be a little bit of an issue because we have the columns defined in each of these nested grids. So maybe what we could do is give all of these explicit widths. I don't know. I, I really don't know how to estimate this. Maybe maybe 250? All right, so I applied that width to every single grid. That was kind of a pain. And that is way too much. So now if I want to fix that, I'm going to have to change all of these widths. All right, I am not hard coding a width. That's too much of a pain. How can I make sure that all of these columns in each of these grids have the same size, but have an auto width so that basically all of these first columns will match the size of the largest column and then everything will line up? Well, the solution to that is grid shared size scope. So what we can do for each of these columns is give it a shared size group and we'll just call this label. And most importantly, this group name needs to be the same for each column if we want the sizing to work. Awesome, now they have a shared size group and it's the same exact thing, it's all the label, so everything should work, right? No, the columns still do not align. And why is that? Well, we need to establish the shared size scope for all of these groups. So grids, they have a property called is shared size scope, which we can set to true. And that means that all grids that are children of the grid with this is shared size scope attached property will refer to this grid to get the size of a specific group. So in this case, since this grid is the shared size scope, then all children grids within this single grid will have the same column or row sizes if they have the same group name. So that said, this attached property is actually defined in the wrong place. We need to move this to this grid right here at the root because this root grid contains all of the children that want to use this shared size group. So now if we run this, as you can see, all of our columns line up and we have successfully implemented shared size grouping and scoping for our grids. So hopefully you guys can implement this in your own projects to enforce consistent grid sizing across columns and rows within nested grids. So all you have to do is define your shared size group and then simply set the root grid that contains the grids with all of these shared size groups to is shared size scope true. Just a quick tutorial on a useful tool. If you have any questions, criticisms, or concerns, be sure to leave them below in the comments section. But other than that, leave a like or subscribe for more. Thank you.